here's a Kirchhoff exercise with two branches. We have some generators with their EMFs, so we have their tensions and their terminals as well, so the plus and minus signs. Then we have some resistors along the branch, the two branches. Then we have two nodes, node A and B, also called junctions. And we have to find the values of the currents that flow from A to B and from B to A. So we start by calling the I1. This one flows from B to A and flows in the node A. So here we have the I2, this is in the vertical line. It goes from B to A and it's flying in again. Then we have the I3 that comes out from A to B. Those directions and those signs, also the names, can be changed. We are going to work with Kirchhoff's equations, so there is no problem. We can just change them and the equations will work as well. There is, you can assign them freely without no problem. So we have to calculate the three currents and we have to assign their magnitude and their direction. We use the first Kirchhoff law. In particular, we have to use the first one and then we're going to complete the other twos. So we write the first equation, I1 plus I2 equals I3. So the sum of the two current that flow in, it's equal to the I3 that flows out. Now we have to write the other two equations. We have to assign the terminals of the resistors. So we have a plus sign every time that the current flows in. This is the convention. So every time that the current touch a resistor, you put a plus sign. So we are going to have a plus sign over here, then a plus sign over here, a plus sign again, here, and then that's it. Then we have the I2 that goes from B to A, and we have a plus here, and then we have a plus sign here. Then we look for the I2, I1, sorry, that goes from B to A, and we have a plus sign here, then it's going to be a plus here, then a plus here, again plus, and the last one. So we just assign the terminals to each resistor. Every time that the current touches the resistor, we put a plus. Just that we will need it for the second Kirchhoff law. Now we can start by writing the other two equations. So here we go from the node A and we go clockwise. But again, you can change it and you can go anti-clockwise. There is no problem. The equations will, will work as well. You can choose it freely. In this case, we're going to use the clockwise direction. So we start from A. And we have the first resistor here. The I2 touches it. And it's a minus 2 I2. And we write it down. Then we have a plus 80. Then we have a minus 4i2. Then we have a plus 5i1 because you have to remember that here the i1 flaws. Then we have a plus 60, a plus i1, then a plus 2i, then plus 40, plus 4i1, minus 180 plus 2 I1 equals 0. Remember the second law of Kirchhoff's. So the sum of all EMFs is equal to the total potential difference drops. So we just 
take it to the other side and we say that the sum of the old potential difference is equal to zero. Then we have the second branch. We start from A and we go clockwise. But again, you can change it. We have a plus 3i3, plus 40, plus 2i3, plus 4i3, then we have a plus 20, then plus 3i3, minus 30. This is because we find the first sign, which is minus, then minus 30, then plus 4i2, then we have a minus 80, and then a plus 2i2 equals 0 again. So now we have to sum the similar terms. The first one has to stay the same. Then we work out the second one. We can sum them up. So it's going to be a minus 6 because they are both i2. So minus 2 minus 4, it's minus 6. Then we have a plus 5, a plus 3, plus 2, and then plus 4, plus 2. So it's going to be a plus 16 i1. Then we are going to have the values of the generators. So it's going to be plus 80, plus 60, then plus 40, and then a minus 120. And this is plus 60 equals 0. So now we have the third equation. So we have to sum the i3s, plus 3, plus 2, plus 4, plus 3, plus 4 again. Sorry, so we have just a plus 12, i3. Then we have the i2s. It's going to be plus 4 and plus 2. So plus 6, i2. And then we have the generators. So it's going to be 40, 20, minus 30. And then we have minus 80, which is minus 50, equals 0. We have to solve the system now. We are going to find the three currents, so I3, I1, and I2. There are many methods, and we're going to use the substitution method. You can use the other twos, but here we're going to show this one. We are going to find uh, one of the currents in one equation, and then we're going to substitute it. So we have, we use the first equation. We can substitute it in the last one, for example. So it's going to be I1 plus I2. We have to rewrite the first equation. So I1 plus I2 equals I3. Then the second one as well, minus 6 I2 plus 16 I1 plus 60 equals 0. Now we're going to substitute it. So I1 plus I2 times 12. So it's going to be plus 12 I1 plus 12 I2. We just substituted it and multiplied. So we have plus 12 and plus 12 and then the other one. So it's a plus 6 I2 minus 50 equals 0. Now we can sum those two. So it's going to be a plus 18 I2, of course. Now from this equation, we can calculate the I1. We have to rewrite it. So we write the first two the same. So then minus 6 I2 plus 16 I1 plus 60 equals 0. Now 
we have a plus 12, i1, plus 18, i2, minus 50, equals 0. So to find the i2, we have to isolate it. So how can we do this? We can flip those other terms in the other side and they change their signs. So it's going to be a plus 12 i1 equals 50 with the plus sign because we are changing the sign. Then it's a minus 18 i2 and now to isolate it we have to divide by 12. So divided by 12 and divided by 12. That's it. Now this is the value of the i1 and we can substitute it in the second equation. So we write it down minus 6 i2 plus 16 that multiplies this value. So we have uh, minus 18 i2 plus 50 divided by 12. And that's it. Plus 60, 0. Now, here we have to do some calculations. We have minus 6 i2. Then we have a plus sign. So it's going to be a 16 times minus 18 divided by 12. So plus times minus, it's a minus. Then we have 16 times 18 divided by 12, it's 24, so minus 24, I2. Then we have 16 times 50 divided by 12, the sign is plus, of course, and we have 66, point 66 plus 60 equals 0. Now we can sum those terms. So it's going to be a minus 30 i2 and then here we have a plus sign so it's going to be plus 126.66 equals 0. Now we can do the same thing that we did before. So we have to isolate the i2. We flip the signs so it's a plus and then a minus. We take the 126.66 to the other side so we flip the sign so it's going to be a plus 30 i2 equals 126.66 and we divide by 30 like we did before divided by 30 and this this ratio is equal to 4.22 amps. It's a plus uh, sign, so it means that we choose the right flowing verse. So the I2 is correct. And its module is 4.22. We have to substitute it in the previous equation. So it's going to be I1 equals plus 50 minus 18 times 4.22 and we don't do the sign divided by 12 and here we do some calculation and we get minus 25.996 divided by 12 so it's going to be a minus 2.16 amps. The negative sign means that we did the direction wrong, so we have to change it. But there is no problem, we, we can just write it down. But the module is correct, 2.16. Now we have the I3, which is equal to I1 plus I2. So it's a minus 2.16. 166 plus 4.22 
that's equal to plus 2.05 amps. So this is the module and the sign states that we choose the right verse of the current. And this is it. We solved the exercise because we calculated three currents and their directions. That's it.